Hey Harry Potter fans, Peter Kenneth here. Welcome back to the Potter Collector channel where we are a community of collectors. This is an exciting video because we have a brand new subscription box, well, brand new to the Potter Collector channel. This is the Mist and Magic box, and this particular box features a potions and herbology theme. So I'm excited to explore everything that Mist and Magic has to offer. Let's open it up. Mist and Magic is sponsoring this video, but all opinions are my own. Now, Mist and Magic ships from Scotland, and all the items are designed in-house by the curators of the box, and they're manufactured in the United Kingdom. The box is just a plain brown box. The boxes are sent out every three months, so quarterly, but it's not a subscription service. So you're not guaranteed each quarter's box. You have to purchase each box individually. Another thing about Mist and Magic, and I see some schnigglies, they are doing their part to reduce waste. So all of the items are either wrapped in or packed in recyclable materials, which is very cool. All right, let me show you what I'm seeing. We have some green tissue paper and there is a sticker that says unlock the magic and some schnigglies are falling out. They're very excited. So we're gonna open up this box. Dun, 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 dun. Oh, I'm gonna cheat sheet here. No looking at the cheat sheet. All right, we have the first item here is the Royal Herbarium Apothecary Shop Restorative Potion. Prevents wound infection and accelerates regrowth of organic tissue. All right, my first thought is this box is so incredibly designed. It always amazes me to see products packaged like this. Someone's brain came up with a whole storyline around a product, and in this case, this restorative potion. So we see ingredient lists, descriptions, the dosages, the backstory of the apothecary shop. A lot of thought, a lot of time was put into just the box alone, and it's getting me very excited to see what is inside of the box. So for adults, one or two teaspoons every two or three hours. It's handmade with the finest ingredients. And the effect, this mixture of potent magical plants has a soothing action upon the inflamed membranes, prevents infections, and accelerates the regrowth of organic tissue. All right, let's take a look at this potion. Very fun potion. I like that the label matches the box, so everything is cohesive. There's a wax seal over the twine that's going around the stem of the bottle, and it's sealed with a plastic cap. I love the swirly effect of the potion. The one thing is that black cap just looks a little too muggle to me. Now we see potions all the time that have, you know, wax all over the top. So this black cap does give it kind of a more modern look. So it's as if I went to the Royal Herbarium and picked it up today. So that is a fun aspect of the black cap. But my personal preference is to not have something that looks like a muggle invented it that makes sense. A fantastic start to this new box that we're opening up. And these two items together need to be displayed together in my opinion. They create a cohesive package and you can even sprinkle some like fake potion ingredients or real potion ingredients at the base of it or something and make a really nice display out of these two items. You guys know I love potions. All right, we have something cloth. It is like a towel, a tea towel, and it has a herbology theme. It's a mixture of what looks like dangerous plants. So we have dead snapdragons, deadly nightshade, snail's flowers, thorn apple, mandrake root, and then here's a sign that says, beware of what you use. Magical plants are very powerful. So this is like a herbology cheat sheet almost, telling you what the magical plant does. And there is a ton on here. So just like that potion bottle, a ton of thought was put into this to create something that doesn't exist that still is magical and feels like it's part of the wizarding world. So let's read about the dead snapdragons. Powerful protective plant, they enhance the power of any shielding ward. Very handy to keep around if you think you are being hexed. Step on a snapdragon. Thorn apples. The thorns on the seed pockets are particularly potent for inducing divination dreams. Reduce them to thin powder and use sparingly as too much of this plant can become highly toxic. I mean, this is so much fun. This could be hung as like a tapestry. It doesn't have to be used as a tea towel. It's on this very soft canvas material. I don't know what this particular 
other printing is called, but it's the printing that doesn't come off in the wash. So it's not screen printed. So very nice, high quality item, very well manufactured. This will last you a long time. All right, we have something in a tube. Looks like a print of sorts, wrapped in purple tissue paper. I see gold foiling. You guys know the Niffler in me loves gold foiling. Oh, there are, wait, there are two prints in here. Okay, let's take out this one first. Oh, it's on canvas too, holy moly. All right, it's a portrait, how, what? Okay, this is incredible. This is a portrait of a wizard, a potion master of some kind. I'm sure we'll see when we look at the cheat sheet who it is. It's printed on canvas, so it looks like a painting. You could put this in a really old, fancy looking frame, and it would look like a portrait from the wizarding world. Look at this, potion master, name to be determined. It's a painting, it's a painting portrait of this, this, this gentleman gentlemen on canvas so it's going to look and feel like a painting if you put this in a frame. This is very cool and the first time that I've seen something like this in a subscription box. I wonder if Mist and Magic has like a series of these magical portraits. If they don't, maybe you should start a magical series of magical portraits, Mist and Magic, because this is very, very fun. This is a great idea. I could see a whole wall of things like this, you know, different sizes, different characters in very fancy looking frames. Fun idea. All right, and now on to to the gold foiled magical print. Seriously beautiful stuff. This is really nice stuff. I'm really impressed with this. This is a print of Moonwater Elixir and the description is in a ancient language so we can't read that, but look at the design of this print. Not only the design, the gold foiling. I mean, you know the Niffler in me is freaking out at the gold foiling. I love the colors on this print. It feels like the evening or twilight or moonlight. The design itself is beautiful. The placement of the gold foiling is placed perfectly. Like everywhere that the gold foiling is placed, like that's where it should have been placed. That, in my opinion, is the mark of a good designer. Where you accent your piece, but don't overpower it. The gold foiling just adds to this beautiful artwork, doesn't subtract and doesn't overpower it. This is really, really nice. All right, Mist and Magic, what else do you have up your sleeves? Glowing Stone Moss. Harvested in the wild Scottish Highlands, during a blue moon. And this is also an item from the Royal Herbarium, or her Royal Herbarium. Royal Herbarium. Her the Royal Herbarium. If you know how to pronounce the Royal that, let me know in the comments down below. Premium quality ingredients for most potent potions. All right, let's pop this. Oh, beautiful. Okay, that looks like magical moss that has been harvested during the blue moon. It almost looks like moss outside during a frost. And it says glowing. So let's see if this does glow. So the moss itself does not glow. It's the little stones inside that glow. It's the creativity that I love of coming up with glowing stone moss that's picked at a blue moon that I love about this fun item. It's a great potion ingredient, beautifully designed box, and the stones, when they glow, do give a really fun effect within the moss. And in my opinion, they didn't even have to put glowing stones in here. But just the fact that they did adds to the overall quality of this box and everything that's in it so far. Love potions and potion ingredients. That's awesome. <gasps> Pin time! I'm Phoenix Tears. Oh, that is beautiful. That is a stunning pin. So the potion inside has a swirled effect. So it looks like the swirliness that we see inside of potions, it's outlined in gold. The Phoenix is beautiful. And then there's a banner over the front that says Phoenix Tears. It's a double clasp pin. And even the card itself is beautifully themed. And it reveals that pin inside. That is so shiny. That's the other thing I love, pins. Potions and pins. One of these days, I will do a full video on my pin collection as well as my potions collection. Lots of schnigglies, wonderful schnigglies. All right, there's something wrapped up here. Another potion ingredient. This is cool. What are these things? Well, they're Samhain seeds. They look like little mini pumpkins. It's in this cork-stopped vial, and it's filled with these fun little seeds. 
Again, this just feels so authentic and magical. I could go into the Royal Herbarium today and purchase this for the potion I'm working on. Really nice, creative, well-designed stuff. All right, there are a few paper product items at the bottom here. <laughs> this is fun. So this is a membership card for the Potion Masters Guild. Certificate of Membership, Potion Masters Guild. Gold foiling, by the way. I hereby pledge to dedicate myself to the pursuit of the arcane art of potion making. And there's a place to put your name on the back. The date is January of 2021. And my unique identification number is 76843. This cardstock is coated in something really nice and soft. It feels like a certificate that would be sent via Owl Post if you joined the Potion Masters Guild. We've got collectible cards, Mist and Magic collectible cards in here. Oh my goodness, see, all right. Even these are foiled. This is way too cool. Okay, Basilisk Venom with green foiling, Wolfsbane with blue foiling, and Crystallized Dragon Blood in red foiling. And the cards also have that really nice coating that this membership card has. Crystallized Dragon Blood is one of the rare substances capable of storing magic. It acts like a reservoir of power you can dig into whenever you need and has many uses from wands to potion making. This ingredient has now been banned due to the dangers of hunting dragons. Seriously, really nice card here. And again, with that foiling, the card is accented perfectly. Everywhere that there should be foil, there is foil. No more, no less. Wolfsbane is a poisonous plant, especially deadly to werewolves. Ingested in small quantities, however, it helps them lessen the effects of their transformation and the influence of the full moon. The leaves have been used to enhance the powers of seers and initiate prophetic dreams. They are their most potent during a full moon. Love this. I love this idea of just magical trading cards. Basilisk Venom is one of the most efficient poisons. Its potency lasts an extremely long time, up to 500 years. Mainly used in dark potions, this corrosive ingredient has to be manipulated with utmost care. The only known cure is Phoenix Tears. All right, and the last item, Department for the Regulation and Control of Dangerous Magical Substances. So this is like a license or permit sheet that allows you to use magical plants and dangerous substances. So there's a place to add, you know, your information, your fingerprints, your photo. There are various stamps from the Ministry of Magic that are allowing you to either make potions from these ingredients, harvest them or cultivate the ingredients. And as of now, I'm only able to make potions with deadly ingredients or venomous or aggressive or dangerous, but I cannot harvest or cultivate them. So I'm gonna have to work towards that. There's a certificate number, an issue and expiration date, as well as my Potion Masters Guild identification number. So what's cool about this item is it mixes with this item. And that's what I'm seeing is that a lot of these items are cohesive, like from the same potion ingredient store or potion store. These two items can go with each other. So it's the same identification number. This is so much fun. Mist and Magic has made it so easy to display these magical items too. So you could have the permit sheet behind the box as well as the potion. I mean like you can make so many cool displays on your shelves with these various items that feel very much like they came out of the wizarding world. Well done Mist and Magic. I mean this is a really nice box that you have going here. Beautiful items quality items. I mean, these are really well manufactured. Look at this box, like so much thought and time was put into this and I still can't get over this. I mean, this is a genius idea. All right, let's take a look at the cheat sheet, herbology and potions. Here is the front of the information card. The first item was the restorative potion. This healing potion is a color changing potion. That's awesome. Turn the bottle upside down to reveal its magical swirls. This potion has been bottled by Demarius Wakefield, one of the apprentice healers at the Royal Herbarium. Number two, the Phoenix Tears pin. Number three, stone moss ingredient box. These special stones will glow in the dark. You will need to keep the box open under the sunlight to recharge and enjoy their magic. Number four, oh, the Potion Master print on canvas. So we're gonna see who this is. This is a portrait of the famous Potion Master Elpheus Alistair Septimus Altam, or Altham. 
He invented many of the most difficult potions and founded Stormcrow, the famous apothecary shop. Number five, Ministry of Magic Permit. Number six, Samhain Seeds Ingredient. Number seven, Print of Moon Water Elixir. I love that print. It's like perfectly designed. Number eight, Potion Master's Guild card. The Potion Master's Guild was created in 1753 to advance the art of potion making and protect its secrets. Number nine, Apothecary Tea Towel. This tea towel is 100% cotton and can be put in the washing machine. And number 10, collectible cards. So there are 10 items in this box here, 10 unique, well-made, well-thought-out items. I mean, even the information card is very cool looking. All right, favorites and least favorites. There really isn't a least favorite, meaning like this is just not a good item, this was poorly designed. Everything was well-designed. I do have items I like more than others, so my least favorites are just items that I don't like as much as some of the other items. I think my favorite is the canvas print. This is just a fantastic idea. Second favorite is just this whole package right here of the restorative potion. Well thought out, very cohesive, even with the black top on top. Just love this. It's going to display beautifully. And then my third favorite, I think, is the trading cards. I just think this is such a fun idea. And then least favorite items, even though they're beautifully designed and I still really like them, are these two here, the membership card and the permit. The pin is really beautiful. What about you guys? What did you think? Should I continue unboxing Mist and magic boxes? What were your favorite items? What were your least favorite items? Let me know in the comments down below. Now this box is still in stock. Mist and Magic is expecting it to sell out soon, but check out the description down below for a link to the Mist and Magic website where you can order this box for yourself. Also, if there's an item that you saw from this box that you're like, I would really just love that one item, Mist and Magic will be selling individual items from this box on their website. And they even have some other really cool looking individual items from past boxes. Again, check the description down below for a link. If you have any questions about Harry Potter or collecting, feel free to leave a comment down below. You can also join the Potter Collector community on Instagram at the Potter Collector or on Twitter at Potter Collector. Now it's time to like, comment, subscribe, and until next time, keep collecting. Thank you so much for watching. If you're new here, welcome. You can subscribe right up here. You can also look at some previously posted content down here. If you have any questions about Harry Potter books or collecting, please feel free to contact me. I'm always happy to help. But for now, I must go. See you next time. Whoa, where'd he go?